أعوذ بالله السميع العليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين ونحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو مهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا عديل ولا خلف لقوله ولا تبديل وأن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأما بعد عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي مذنبات أولا بتقوى الله عز وجل يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين ويقول الله عز وجل إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصله بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون عباد الله اقلبوا أن أستقل حديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه راشد وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثات بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من النار we begin with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. The praise and the thanks belongs to Allah. The praise and the thanks belongs to Allah, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, master of the day of judgment. We praise him, we seek his assistance, and we seek his forgiveness. And we seek refuge with Allah from the mischief that is in ourselves and from the sins that we commit. He or she that Allah guides, most certainly this person is rightly guided. And he who Allah allows to go astray, there is no guide nor protector who can guide this individual aright. We openly testify that there is no deity, there's nothing worthy of worship, nothing worthy of worship, except for Allah, who has no partner nor any equal, and there is no contravening his speech nor any substitution. And we also bear witness that our leader and our beloved, Prophet Muhammad, is Allah's slave servant and his messenger. And we ask Almighty Allah to send his salah and his salam, his peace and his blessings upon our leader Muhammad and upon his family. And what follows? Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran as it relates to us in having taqwa. And I recommend for you, but firstly for my own sinful self to have taqwa for Allah, the proper consciousness the proper regard, the proper awe of Allah. He subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, O oh, those of you who believe, have taqwa for Allah and be with the truthful people. And he, Azza wa Jal, mighty and sublime, said the believers are but one fraternity. They're one brotherhood and one sisterhood. So reconcile matters. Make peace between your brothers and be regardful for Allah, have taqwa for Allah in order that you may receive his mercy, meaning more of his mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala, more of his mercy, highly glorified is he. Today's subject of brothers and sisters in Islam relates to a command in the Quran, waqulu lin nasi husna. When he subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded in the Quran 
and speak to people husna. Speak to people in a beautiful way or in a beautiful form. And this beauty, this uh, husna, which is mentioned in this ayah, relates to the word isan, <clears throat> spiritual excellence, spiritual beauty, that we as Muslims should strive to speak with people in substance and in form, that the beauty that we try to exemplify when we speak to people and we speak with people is in subject or in, uh, it's in, uh, it's in substance, but also in form. And this beautiful speech, when it is tested, it can be tested by the environments that we are in and who we are around, especially when people are involved in lewd conversations or involved in falsehood, but also in terms of when individuals have some sort of beef with us or some sort of hostility. <clears throat> this is when it can be tested. As relates to the events of Shah Muharram that we are in right now, the blessed month of Muharram, the first month on the Islamic calendar in this Hijri year of 1442. And last week, on last Yom al Jumu'ah, Muslims across the world were remembering the events that are predominantly associated with Yom Ashura. Yom Ashura being predominantly associated with the salvation of the children of Israel from Pharaoh, number one, and number two, the martyrdom of the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad Hussein ibn Ali sallallahu alayhi uh, along with other Hashemites, other descendants and relatives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and some of his companions. And I would like to mention two things that, as it relates to this and uh, associating between these two events. And the command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives of waqulu linasi husna and speak to people well, speak to people beauty. We'll start with the latter that was referenced first. Hussein ibn Ali. And Hussein ibn Ali um the, uh, the one of the two grandsons of our beloved. We, as a reminder, we know that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about him, "Husainu minni wa ana min Hussein, ahabbullah man ahabba Husaina." Hussein is from me, and I am from him, and Allah loves whoever loves Hussein. And uh, this is narrated in authentic tradition. And after the martyrdom of Sayyidina Hussein, he only had one surviving son when he was martyred in the 61st year after Hijra in Karbala, which is in Iraq. And of that uh, son that he had was Ali, Ali ibn Hussein, also known as Zainul Abidin, the adornment of the worshippers. And after the Hashemites, after he and his uh, aunt Sayyidah Zainab and his sisters and some of those others who were with the Hashemites, the women folk who were shackled, uh, had shackles on their necks as well as on their wrists and their hands. And they were paraded from Karbala and the Kufa and then walked on foot all the way to Damascus and Syria. It's a long walk in the heat. So they walked them. And then once they got to Damascus, 
um, they were met with hostility. And I like to relate this one story uh, that relates to the hostility that they faced and how Zeno Abidine responded. So there was an elder in Damascus who had fell into the propaganda that was given that the grandchildren and great-grandchildren of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were, were rebellious, deviant uh, transgressors, rebellious, deviant disbelievers. They were labeled as Khawarij. This is the group that we're talking about. This elderly man from Syria confronted Zainal Abidin Ali ibn Hussein, and he said, Alhamdulillah ladhi nasara amir al-mu'mineen alaykum ayyuhal khawarij. So he's addressing Zainal Abidin and uh, the others that are with him from the Hashemites. The Syrian man said, Praise and thanks belong to Allah. He who helped the commander of the faithful, uh, meaning the, the king that was ruling at that time, that was against the Hashemites named Yazid and Muawiyah. Praise and thanks belongs to Allah, the commander of the faithful, the prince of the believers, Yazid, over you, O you deviant uh, rebels. So, Zainal Abidin asked the man, قَالَ لَهُ الْإِمَامْ زِنُ عَبِدِينَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ يَا شَيْخِ هَلْ قَرَقْتَ الْقُرْآنَ O Shaykh, and, and Shaykh in this uh, meaning, Shaykh also can mean someone who's an elder, and not just someone who's an imam or a scholar. He says, O Shaykh, uh, do you read the Qur'an? This is Zainu Abidin's response. Do you read the Qur'an? فَقَالْ نَامْ كَرَحْتُهُ He says, yes, I read the Qur'an. قَالَ عَلَيَ السَّلَامِ Zainal Abidin said, فَأَرِفْتَ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ Do you recognize this ayah of the Qur'an? قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمُوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَةِ do you recognize this ayah of the Qur'an? It's in Surah Ashura, the 23rd ayah. He said, Do you recognize the ayah when Allah Azawajal said, Say to the people, O Prophet, I ask no reward from you except that you love my close loved ones, my close kin. Kala Ashaykh, Karahtu Dhalik. Say, Yes, I've, I've read that. فَقَالَ عَلَيَا السَّلَامِ فَنَحْنُ قُرْبَ يَا شَيْخِ He says, O oh, Shaykh, we are those close blood kin in which the Qur'an makes reference to. And then later on in the discourse, in the discourse he says to him, فَنَحْنُ ذُو قُرْبَ يَا شَيْخِ وَلَكِنْ هَلْ كَرَحْتَ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّسَ أَهْلِ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَحِيرَكُمْ تَطِيرًا He said, we are those close kin, ya shaykh. But have you also, have you read the ayah of the Qur'an that Allah desires not but to purify you, O Ahlul Bayt, O people of the prophetic house, and give you a thorough purification? This is in Surah Al-Ahzab, the 33rd ayah. Have you read this? Qala ashaykh qad karaktu dhalik. Say, yeah, yeah, certainly, of course I've read this. I've read this in the Quran. Faqala alayhi salam fanahnu ahl al bayt. He says, we are the Ahlul Bayt. We are the ones in which the Qur'an, this ayah, specified. We are these people. 
then the sheikh then uh, goes and then he says after this, he says, Kala and a ta'ib. He says, I, I'm sorry, I repent from this position. And then he said that it was Yazid and Muawiyah who had spread speech. He had spread speech, spread disinformation that you all were rebels and you all were worthy of being killed, is what the Sheikh said. Now, what is the lesson in this in this story? What's the lesson besides this being the relating to the fada'il or the virtues or the merits of the household of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam? And uh, as we should have uh, uh, affinity and respect for the righteous companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and have love for the Muhajirin, the Ansar, the righteous immigrants and the helpers. We should also have love and a level of deference towards the family of the Prophet and his descendants. And there, and there shouldn't be any conflict inside of ourselves in regards to holding this belief. Now, what is the lesson in regards to this relating back to and say to the people a good word. Now, when the Syrian elder spoke to Zion Abidin and praised God that his, his father had been murdered and his brothers had been murdered and his cousins had been murdered and also called him a pejorative name, then look at Zainal Abidin's response. Zainal Abidin didn't call him a name back. Zainal Abidin didn't curse him. Zainal Abidin kept his cool and his response back to the individual were the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there's no more beautiful words than the words of God. Now, what do we think the response would have been if Zainal Abidin would have met ugly speech with ugly speech? Most likely he would not have been able to turn the man's heart. The man probably wouldn't have repented and changed his position. He actually most likely, in Allah's best, but had Zainal Abidin stepped outside the character of his grandfather and used vile speech and rotten speech and cursed him back and didn't say beautiful words to him, then he probably would have continued to have believed the false propaganda that was put out uh, against Ahl Bayt by Yazid ibn Muawiyah. So, when we look at people, even when there are adversaries, brothers and sisters in Islam, we work towards changing people's hearts or giving people the truth, not with loud speech, not with profanity, not with uh, cussing them out or cursing them, meaning Latina, and praying against them, but we use the beautiful speech and the beautiful words and try to use wisdom. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, call to the way of your Lord, bil hikmah ma'idatul hasana, ujadiltum bilatihiya asan. Allah Azza wa Jal said, call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching. And if you're going to debate with people, then debate with people here asin. And that which is better, that which is more spiritually beautiful, you use better words than what they use, not just in substance, but also in the form. In relationship to Musa alayhi salam, wa Harun alayhi salam, two great prophets, Moses and Aaron, 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa and Harun to go speak to Fir'aun, the command was, Speak to Pharaoh in a mild tone. At least he remembers or fears, meaning fears Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is the command that was given to Moses and Aaron to the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh that was part of a system that enslaved their people for 400 years. Pharaoh that unjustly killed people. Pharaoh who saw himself actually as a god. He said, according to the Quran, to the Quran He said, I am the Most High Lord. Pharaoh made a statement that even Satan didn't make. It's how wicked Pharaoh is, how much of a tyrant and oppressor. And with all of his zulm, with all of his oppression and his jar, his tyranny, Allah Azza wa Jal commanded those two noble prophets that when you first go to engage him, that when you first go to talk with him and engage him, even this brute, this tyrant, don't go yelling and shouting at him. Don't go cursing him out. Speak to him in a mild tone, in good tone. Speak the truth with him, speak the truth to him, but with good words and excellent etiquettes and manners. And of course, Aaron and Moses tried their best and Pharaoh became more insolent and more arrogant until they migrated with the children of Israel and Pharaoh and his host, his party, his army was destroyed. But what we are responsible for, brothers and sisters in Islam, is not the final outcome. We have our beliefs and we act upon our beliefs and we leave the results to Allah. Because some of us might be thinking, well, you know, I have to do this to this person or that with that person or fight fire with fire. No, we are to engage and to act according to our standards and our virtues. And we don't lower ourselves down and mirror those who we loathe. We don't mirror the behaviors of those that we find despicable and act like them. And then we can end up being we can end up being wronged and being a wrongdoer simultaneously because these are not mutually exclusive. Speak to people beautifully. And this is what we can see from Zainal Abidin, Ali ibn Hussein, ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi alayhim. And this is what we see from uh, from the example or what he had that conversation with that Syrian elder and this is what we see from the example that we are given according to the Quranic narrative of Moses and Aaron as they engage the worst of the worst the biggest brute the biggest bully the biggest tyrant the biggest um, vulgarly indecent uh, oppressor. We carry ourselves in the way we're supposed to according to the prophetic commands that were given by Almighty God and we leave the results in Allah Azza wa Jal's control in Nolaha ala kulli shayin qadir because most certainly Allah has power over things and he grants help and he grants us assistance through his divine wisdom as he pleases. A'udhu billahi ibn ash-shaytur rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman r-Rahim. Maliki yawm ad-deen. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihdina as-sarat al-mustakeem. Ihdina as-sarat al-mustakeem. As-sarat al-adhina an'amta alayhim. Wa'ir al-ma'adubi alayhim wa'adhalim. 
إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين أمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وترحم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما ترحمت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وتحنن على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما تحننت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما سلمت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد We ask Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive us of our sins and to forgive all believing men and believing women those who are living and those who are deceased we ask almighty allah azza wa jal to set or right the affairs of the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we ask almighty allah azza wa jal to give relief to the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam we ask almighty allah azza wa jal to have mercy and to shower his mercy upon the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam we ask Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal to bring peace to our country, to the United States of America. We ask Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to guide our family members who are not on Islam, and guide our friends who are not on Islam to guide them to the Deen. Subhana Rabbi Kabir Isati Ama Yasifun wa Salam wa Arham Rasulim wa Hamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر